This is problem 1592 on page 693. Arm AB rotates with a constant angular velocity of 90 RPM clockwise. Knowing that gear A does not rotate, <coughs> so A is grounded, uh, determine the acceleration of the tooth of gear B, which is in contact with gear A. So I've drawn a, a point of contact between the two gears here, noting that A is ground, two, uh, link two, or body one is ground. Body two is the connecting arm between the two and then body three or uh, which, well, which has point B in it is the gear that's rotating back. Now I've drawn it at a different angle than what was given in the problem statement because there's there's no reason to draw it at the angle they showed. I can just rotate the view. I'm going to put my coordinate system to line up with the arm anyway so I just drew it this way. The larger wheel, the larger gear is 0.12 meters radius. The smaller one is 0.06 radius. Uh, I went ahead and determined the instant centers. This must be the instant center between body one and two. Here's the instant center between body two and three. And then this must be the instant center between body one and three, where body one and three are given the gears. I converted the angular speed into radians per second, and they said that the angular speed is constant. So that means there's no angular acceleration. So we're really interested in the acceleration point C, but on body three. That's where we're interested in. In order to solve this, I'll begin by performing velocity analysis. So if we write our velocity analysis with the instant centers, we note that the angular speed of body three, this one, is equal to, well, let me back up. The linear speed of point B on the arm, which is body two, and on body three, which is the gear, that linear speed would be exactly the same. If the arm is rotating clockwise as shown, and what that would mean is that there's a velocity point going down, but it has to be the same on body three and two, otherwise the two come apart. So what that tells us is that the angular speed of body three, okay, well, where is its instant center? Well, its instant center with respect to ground is right here. So the angular speed multiplied by the distance between I13 and I23, that's the velocity of point B. But that velocity has to be the same on body two. Well, where is body two's instant center with respect to ground? It's right here. So that would be equal to omega two multiplied by I12, I23. So the length from point A to point B. Okay, so we can solve for the angular speed of body three. It's the angular speed of body two scaled by the length of the arm and the radius of the smaller gear. Okay, so now let's plug in the numbers. The speed is 9.425 radians per second. I12 to I23, well that's the length of the arm, so that's equal to the sum of the radii of the two gears. So that's point zero, I'm sorry, point zero point one eight, because it's point one two plus point oh six. Divided by the radius of the smaller gear, that's 0 0.06. I'll leave off the units because they will just cancel. And we'll find that the angular speed of body three, I'll tell you what, let me put it over here, is about 28.274 radians per second. Now, is that clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, remember, if the common instant center is outside of the two ground instant centers, then both bodies rotate in the same direction. And that should make sense intuitively that as uh, the bar or this link rotates clockwise, B will also have to rotate clockwise in order to roll around one. So it makes sense that this is just a uh, clockwise rotation. Okay, so there's the velocity analysis. That's not what we were asked for. We were asked for the acceleration of point C. Well, we can't really get that yet. We need the acceleration of point B first. So the acceleration of point B would be equal to the acceleration of point A plus the relative acceleration between B and A. The, the acceleration of A is exactly zero. It is a grounded point. Okay, so there's no acceleration of body A. So this would be just the relative acceleration. And notice that there's only a normal contribution because the link rotates at constant speed. So there's no way that B is going to have some tangential acceleration in either direction because the angular speed is constant. So the, anyway, the normal acceleration will be pointed 
in the negative I direction. You'll notice the coordinate system I've selected there. It's still a right-handed coordinate system because X into Y would be J into the board, or would be a Z into the board, okay? All right, so uh, expanding this just a little bit, the normal acceleration equation is omega squared R. So uh, let's see, so that would be omega squared, but what omega? Well, this would be the angular speed of body two because we're talking about the motion between A and B, which has to do with body two. So angular speed of body two squared multiplied by the distance between A and B, and of course this is again in the negative I direction. Okay, so plugging in numbers, we'd have 9.425 radians per second quantity squared. RAB is 0 0.18, uh, what are we in? We're in meters. There we go. And uh, let's see, again, still in the negative I direction. So this comes out to about negative 16.0 I meters per second squared. Not surprisingly, <coughs> and well, as we've made it, it's pointed to the left, okay? So there's the acceleration of point B, but that's not really what we want. We want the acceleration of point C. And you might say, well, why didn't you go from A directly to C? <clears throat> well, I need C to be a point on body B, so I need to understand, or on body 3, so I need to understand how it's moving and understand that there, there won't be any uh, tangential acceleration of this point, I'll prove that in just a minute, but there will be normal acceleration. If it's on B, then it's accelerating towards the center of curvature, okay? So we have to be careful here. So let's move from B to C, so acceleration of B plus the relative acceleration of C with respect to B. Okay. So now the acceleration point B plus uh, the acceleration of C with respect to B in the normal direction. Well, what's that going to look like? Well, what are we doing? We're taking B as our reference. So if this is B and we're interested in how C is moving as if B is sitting still, that's what we mean by this. So with respect to B sitting still, well then you're just going to have a normal acceleration to the right. So that normal piece will just be in the I direction and then plus the acceleration of C with respect to B in the tangential direction and I'll just write J because it doesn't really matter. The reason it doesn't matter is because remember the arm is rotating at constant speed therefore B has to be rotating at constant speed as well. Since it's rotating at constant speed and this is the angular acceleration piece it must be zero. So the angular acceleration would be a zero, therefore the tangential acceleration is also zero. The way we would uh, evaluate it is an alpha r, but that alpha, as I said, is zero. Okay? So, there we go. Uh, what do we need to do now? Well, we can just plug in, that, well not quite, let's note that this is the angular speed of body 3 squared times the distance between b and c. Okay, and then we can plug in our numbers. The acceleration of B is just negative 16.0i, takes care of this term, plus omega 3 squared, 28.274 radians per second quantity squared times the distance between C and B, and that is 0 0.06 meters. Now notice this is in the I direction. Let's maintain that. Let me move the square where it looks reasonable. Okay, plug the numbers into your calculator. This comes out to about 31.98i meters per second squared. And there's the acceleration point C. Notice it's only in the I direction. That's what we expected. Um, and that's it.